everyone. In this lecture, we're continuing our project of deploying a smart contract with Python to the Robston Ethereum network. Previously, we learned how to install dependencies to use Web3 Python in Colab. We built a simple Solidity smart contract. We imported the contract into Colab and we deployed the contract with Python. So now we can interact with the deployed contract with Python. So join me back in your Colab project and we're going to interact with our contract. So first we need to grab a reference to our contract because we did deploy it okay, with our transaction. So now how do we get that deployed instance? Well, let's get our contract instance with web3.eth.contract. Here we have to pass in our address which is going to be the transaction receipt dot contract address. As well, we have to pass in the ABI for the contract, which is the ABI variable. And then we'll have our contract instance, which we can inspect. Okay, so we have the instance of our contract. Now we can call some functions from the contract. So if you call a function, you're simulating making the call and getting the return value. But if you transact, then you're actually changing the state of the contract. So let's take a look at calling first. I'm going to take my contract instance and call functions. Then we can get a function from the contract, like get stored number or update stored number. So let's try get stored number, which is from our Solidity code. We can use call to simulate getting a value. Okay, and I'm going to run this code cell and I get zero as a return value because zero was the initial value of the stored number. Now what if I try to call the function update stored number and pass in a hundred? Okay, I can run this code cell and I have a hundred returned but if I get the stored number again, I actually get zero. The reason being that using call is just a simulation. It makes the call and is going to simulate getting the return value, but it cannot update the state. You cannot update the state of a smart contract with call. If you want to actually change a value in the smart contract instance that lives on the blockchain, then you have to make a transaction. So we can try this again. We can get our, let's see, update number transaction. And we can call the contract instance.functions.update stored number to something like 33. Okay, then instead of call, we're going to use build transaction. Here we'll pass in an object con containing the transaction details, like the gas price will be web3.eth.gas price. The chain ID will be the chain ID that we have. So let's see, the Robston chain, which remember is three. It's the ID for your network that you're using. Then from what address are we sending the transaction? Let's see, we're sending it from our wallet. Then what will the nonce be? So this has to be updated with each transaction. So let's see, we had a previous nonce. If we search for it, the previous nonce was 10. So this time I'm going to take the nonce and just update it by one. All right, so let's see here. We're going to take the nonce and add one to it. Okay. The nonce is going to be 10 initially, and then we're going to update it by one. So instead of updating it by one, I'm going to update it by transaction index, keeping track of our transactions. So initially the transaction index will equal one, but I'm going to increase it by one with every transaction that way this nonce will be updated automatically because you need a new nonce for each transaction. You can't reuse the nonce. Okay, so that is going to give us the transaction. We can run the code cell and then inspect 
the transaction details. Next, as usual, we have to sign the transaction. So we did that before. Remember, we called sign transaction with a private key. We have to do that again. We have to call sign transaction, passing in the transaction that we want to sign in our private key. Okay, then we'll have our signed transaction. And for this to work, you have to have a private key that matches your wallet because every wallet has an address and a private key. So I've put in my private key and then I can run the code cell and I get my signed transaction. After you've signed it, you have to send it. So we did that before as well. We called send raw transaction. So we're going to do that again. We're going to send the, tran the raw transaction. Okay, then after we send the raw transaction, we're going to wait for the transaction receipt. So we'll do that as well. And that is going to allow us to perform that transaction. So I'm going to run this code cell, which will do the transaction of updating the stored number. Then we can check after that's been performed. We can check by calling get stored number. And to just get a value from the contract instance, we don't have to make a transaction. We can just use call, but as soon as we want to update the contract values, then we have to, ha we have to use a transaction. We can't use call. So now if I run this cell, I get 33 because I did the transaction, which is going to update the stored number. So if I try to update the stored number afterward without a transaction to something like 99, it may appear to work, but in actuality, it doesn't. It stays 33. Because you can't update with call, you have to update with transact. You can get values with call, but you can't update them with call. So important to note in Web3 Python. Congratulations everyone on building this project. Join me in our next lecture, we're going to start a new project. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.